Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog on a topic suggested by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is, what is your opinion of ghostwriters? I'm really quite neutral on the subject. I don't actively avoid ghostwritten books. I don't feel cheated by ghostwritten books. But on the other hand, I don't feel the need to seek out books that I know to be ghost written. For two reasons, the celebrity aspect of it and it being normal in my experience. I am not, and this will come as potentially little surprise to people given my answers to previous topics, hugely obsessed with celebrity culture. I like books because I like books not because of any fashion association. So I don't read books with a huge hype around them, whether that's a huge hype because the book is famous or that's a huge hype because the person whose name is on the cover as the author is famous. I like Nathan Phelan's films and his television appearances. I like Castle, I will potentially slightly rearrange my day to watch Castle, but I have no interest at all in seeking out the Richard Castle tie-in novels. Above and beyond, if I saw one on the shelf, I might pick it up. But I'm not that interested in it, so if it isn't actually written by Richard Castle, Nathan Phelan, whoever's name is on the cover, it's still, do I enjoy the book because it's well written? Do I not enjoy the book because it's not well written? Is it the kind of story I like? Is it not the kind of story I like? There's nothing really about the name of the author that changes my expectations going in because I'll base my expectations on assessing the book. And so unless Stephen King decided to get a ghostwriter who turned them into My Little Pony fanfic and no one mentioned that, the fact it wasn't written by the person on the cover is very unlikely to trick what I'm looking for. Secondly, expectation. Outside of writing fiction, lots of people as their day jobs do a task for an employer and then their employer takes the task, sticks the company's name on it and sends it to the customer. You don't go to a particular window in McDonald's because you think a particular person who works in McDonald's does a better burger. You don't go to almost any situation thinking the specific person who did this task is going to do a particularly good job. You don't pick your cashier at Sainsbury's on that basis, or at least I don't. So I'm used to, outside of writing, outside of reading, the person who did a chunk of the job not being the person who is listed on the front or the person who you give responsibility to, that you are buying a product that has a label on the front, but if it's the work of a specific cashier, specific burger chef, specific mechanic, you don't suddenly feel oh no, I've been cheated by Sainsbury's because actually the responsibility for my shopping should go specifically to this cashier. Now, where it does potentially make a difference, says goat writing, is if someone releases a ghostwritten series, if the publisher hasn't tied in the same ghostwriter. So the celebrity, I haven't to use the Richard Castle novels as an example that I haven't read because I can't think of another celebrity series. If the first Richard Castle tie-in was written by someone who was very good at mysteries, the second one was written by it, so I enjoyed both of those, and then the third one they decided to cut costs, they got someone who didn't have experience with mysteries, the brand might lead me to think I enjoyed the first two, I'll enjoy the third one. But that would, so that might be a situation in which a change of ghostwriter would reduce my enjoyment. But 
often, if you're doing a tie-in like that, publishers will use ghostwriters who are skilled in matching styles. There are a couple of books on my Goodreads list that I discovered later were written by a house name rather than by a specific author in that they were released under the name but lots of different people wrote them but I hadn't noticed because professional ghostwriters are usually writers who are skilled enough in matching a style that one of the services they offer is that close enough to the previous books feel. So ghostwriting generally, I'm not saying there should be more of it, but I have no objection to it happening. It doesn't spoil my enjoyment. And so the only thing potentially I lose out on is if I don't know who the ghostwriter is, I won't know if I see a book in their own name on the shelf that potentially I'm going to like it because I liked something that they wrote and haven't put their name on the front of. So, toodaloo!